Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and well, sorry, <laughs> uh, but my voice was enough. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. It's not working. This way. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, Khaldun Azhari, I'm former president of this club, and I have the honor to welcome one of the top diplomats in Tokyo, Mr. Mikhail Yurevich Galuzin, Russian ambassador to Japan. A citizen of Moscow during the glory days of the Soviet Union, uh, Mr. Galuzin uh, graduated from the Institute of Asia and Africa at Moscow State University in uh, 1983, before joining the foreign ministry in the same year and he became minister at the Russian embassy in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, that was in 2010 until 2012, approximately. And uh, in the following years, he uh, was at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Russia. He assumed the position of Director of Asian Affairs. Later, uh, Indonesia was his destination as an ambassador. And in 2018, he became ambassador to Japan. And uh, his fluency in Japanese is a major asset uh, for his life in Japan. But with the theoretical state of war still existing between both countries, he will also face challenges with the territorial dispute over four northern uh, islands still to be solved. Uh, although a former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe met uh, President Vladimir Putin uh, over 20 times trying to resolve that dispute, there is no indication our generation will see any solution to this problem, uh, unless maybe if we live two more hundred years. Uh, anyway, I am sure Ambassador Golzin will enlighten us as to whether or not uh, the Japanese have any hope of getting any of these islands back. Uh, other issues uh, we will hear from Ambassador Galuzin, Galuzin uh, today include uh, fighting the coronavirus. Japan seems to have little interest in vaccine from Russia and also China. Also, although, uh, also there is uh, uh, the Tokyo Olympics and how Russian athletes will be accommodated here. Ambassador Galuzin's uh, father was uh, also a diplomat and spent five years in Japan from uh, 1966. And uh, so we should be able to hear a good uh, account of uh, the prospects of the relations uh, from, a diplomat, from a diplomat who was raised to know how to solve issues with a country he knows very well. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to the Russian ambassador to Japan, Mr. Mikhail Yurevich Galuzin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my pleasure to address uh, the uh, Foreign Correspondents Club of uh, Tokyo. It is my special pleasure that today our moderator is Mr. Ashari, whom I know for decades already. And uh, of course, uh, it is, it is, I consider it as a very important opportunity to uh, brief you on the uh, general directions of the Russian poli foreign policy and in this context uh, about our view uh, on our relations uh, with our good neighbor uh, Japan. Uh, actually, uh, quite recently I've got the second shot of, of Sputnik V vaccine, so maybe I can speak without <laughs> this. <laughs> without this um, mouth shield, if, if you allow me. Uh, and uh, I would like to start, if you allow me, Mr. Ashari, I would like to start uh, from, uh, uh, from a brief uh, comment on uh, what you said uh, about the theoretical state of war between Russia and Japan. Uh, please, I would like to assure all of you that, uh, in fact, and in reality and uh, legally, uh, there is no even a theoretical state of war between Russia and Japan, uh, because uh, the state of war was seized, uh, state of war was stopped, and uh, diplomatic relations were restored uh, back in 1956 uh, by signing a joint declaration 
the joint declaration between the Soviet Union and Japan. So there is no theoretical state of war. Uh, there is no peace treaty between Russia and Japan, and I will uh, talk. I hope to talk later about this. But uh, no theoretical, even, even even a theoretical state of war. I'd like to <laughs> to make it clear, to make it clear for you. Uh, well, um, first of all, I would like to. Uh, explain to you uh, our vision on the uh, current international situation and uh, 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 first of all I would like to start uh, from uh, the fact uh, that the pandemic of uh, novel coronavirus uh, is uh, uh, the most serious challenge uh, to all of us and it tests uh, the, the solidity of the whole architecture of global governance, uh, which was created um, as a result of the uh, Second World War. Uh, the prospects uh, for a sustainable development of the international community are connected, uh, are directly connected to the ability of the states to find effective solutions uh, of uh, our common problems um, connected to the preparedness uh, to exercise collective leadership uh, to implement uh, true multilateralism. In this context, um, the unique legitimacy and capabilities of the United Nations as a backbone uh, of uh, the current world order are especially in demand, as well as the basic principles of international law stipulated in the UN Charter. Russia calls upon all the states to follow the goals and principles of the UN Charter, ensuring respect for sovereignty, equality, non-interference into domestic affairs, uh, solutions of disputes uh, by political and diplomatic means, renouncing uh, threat of use of force or use of force. It is especially important uh, nowadays when we see uh, that uh, the uh, multipolar system of international relation, uh, relations is uh, forming. Uh, today, uh, nowadays, uh, the uh, the, the uh, partner-like uh, interaction and cooperation uh, is demanded uh, based on mutual respect uh, and uh, based on pragmatism and devoid of any ideology. Uh, it is the only way to improve the atmosphere in the world and to ensure predictability of uh, further development of uh, the international community. That is, that is especially true of such uh, global challenges as uh, th the threat of terrorism, the threat of uh, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, climate change, new infectious diseases, etc. Uh, no country uh, can overcome such, such uh, challenges uh, alone, no matter how powerful this country is. Uh, Russia is open for such uh, an interaction. We are ready to share our experience and we are ready to cooperate uh, with all the states and international uh, structures. Uh, and we have proved it once again. Uh, well, we have proven it once, once again uh, just now. Uh, you know that uh, yesterday uh, my minister, foreign minister of Russia, Mr. Sergei Lavrov, met his American counterpart, uh, Mr. Anthony Blinken, in Reykjavik, Iceland, to uh, and discussed uh, the possible ways of uh, uh, of uh, improving uh, bilateral relations between between Russia and the United States, and also such topical international issues as. Uh, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, uh, the, the uh, addressing the problem of uh, uh, continued implementation of uh, joint comprehensive action plan on Iranian nuclear problem, 
a program and uh, some other uh, some other acute international uh, issues. So uh, this is exactly from the above mentioned point of view uh, that we consider our relations uh, with Japan. President Putin and Minister Lavrov have uh, repeatedly said that we will enhance our ties and cooperation with uh, Japan. We consider Japan, uh, J Japan is our close neighbor in the Far East. It's our important, it is our important partner in the region and uh, uh, on the global arena. Uh, the key role uh, in ensuring sustainable uh, positive dynamics of our bilateral ties uh, belongs to the contracts of our leaders. Uh, in September 2020, uh, the first telephone conversation between President Putin and Prime Minister Suga was held, and uh, the both uh, sides confirmed uh, their, uh, their mutual intention to uh, promote uh, comprehensively Russian-Japanese relations for the interest of our peoples and uh, for the interests of uh, stability and uh, security in the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, we are satisfied then uh, that uh, the Japanese government, uh, Prime Minister Suga, uh, consider uh, the, the uh, uh, sustainable uh, relations with Russia as uh, one of the uh, key priorities of the Japanese uh, diplomacy. Uh, during telephone conversation between uh, Minister Lavrov and uh, Foreign Minister of Japan, Mr. Toshimitsu Mategi, in October 2020, uh, the, the uh, mutual intention to uh, strengthen uh, friendly bilateral ties between the two countries was also confirmed. We attach uh, particular importance uh, to the to cooperate, uh, dialogue and cooperation with Japan in the areas of politics and uh, security. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a very positive, concrete example of such cooperation. It is our um, uh, very, very close interaction with the Japanese partners in such a topical area uh, as, uh, as countering uh, uh, drug uh, illegal drug activity, uh, illegal uh, countering uh, drug uh, threat. You know that uh, under the auspices uh, of the United Nations Department uh, on uh, Drugs and Crimes, uh, Russia and Japan are carrying out such important projects uh, as uh, training of anti-drug officers uh, from Afghanistan and the Central uh, Asia uh, countries. And uh, we want uh, such cooperation uh, with Japan in addressing uh, topical international issues uh, to further continue and uh, expand. <sighs> Also, uh, our countries are very, very important economic partners for each other. Uh, Russia uh, has shown clearly, uh, not only in Europe, but also here in the Asia-Pacific region, that uh, we are responsible and reliable suppliers, that we are a responsible and a reliable supplier of strategically important energy resources to our foreign partners, including Japan. Uh, so we are uh, uh, an important exporter of, uh, to Japan of such uh, energy resources as uh, crude oil, liquid, nat uh, liquid natural gas, coal. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, there was no case uh, that uh, Russia uh, would cut uh, its uh, obligations uh, in accordance with the contracts we signed. Uh, there, there was no case that uh, we uh, would impose politically motivated uh, or any other so-called uh, sanctions that would lead to uh, cutting uh, our energy resource export 
to our partners in accordance with the existing contracts. Uh, so uh, that is how we seriously address uh, to, the, to that uh, vital important issue of ensuring energy resource uh, supply. Um, uh, we uh, uh, are realizing with Japan several important and large-scale pro uh, projects in that area including Sahalin 1 and Sahalin 2 projects, oil and gas projects, uh, including Arctic LNG2 project in Yamal Peninsula in polar regions of uh, Russia. Uh, and we think uh, now of uh, further development of such projects, including construction of uh, the LNG terminals uh, in uh, Murmansk region in the west, on the western part of Russia, and uh, in Kamchatka region uh, on the eastern part of uh, my country. Uh, also, we consider as a very promising area of our cooperation uh, the area of renewable energy. And uh, Russia can be exporter of hydrogen and ammonium. Uh, in the context of decarbonization of world economy, Japanese economy, Russian economy, uh, which is very, very uh, important task for the whole international com community nowadays. And uh, uh, we have also good experience with Japan in construction in Russia of wind power, uh, electricity generation, uh, generation, uh, electricity generation uh, facilities. So uh, we have very broad prospects for uh, effective and mutually beneficial cooperation with Japan in the area of energy supply. Uh, one more attractive area of our cooperation is uh, effective utilization of the energy, uh, sorry, transit potential of uh, Russia. Uh, we expect uh, further active cooperation with Japan in uh, using uh, Trans-Siberian Railway uh, for uh, good supply from Japan uh, via Russia to the uh, European countries and to Russia itself, of course. Uh, we uh, also expect further cooperation with Japan in uh, using polar maritime route, uh, which is being used more and more as an important uh, route Actually, as far as I know, the shortest route uh, to supply goods from uh, the Asia-Pacific region to the European continent. Uh, and uh, we know that already the Japanese companies started, uh, use, started uh, to use this route for LNG supply uh, to Japan. Uh, from the above mentioned uh, projects in Yamal Peninsula in the polar regions of uh, Russia. Uh, there is also uh, one, there is also uh, such an important trend in Russian uh, Japanese economic ties as uh, creation of new production and supply chains between Russian and uh, Japanese uh, enterprises. Uh, for example, in the city of Vladivostok in the far in the Russian uh, Far East, uh, we uh, the, the, the Matsuda uh, company, uh, together with the Russian company of Solars, uh, established a, uh, a plant which produces not only Matsuda cars but also engines, uh, which are further supplied uh, to Japan. And Matsuda company uses these engines uh, in the cars uh, it, it assembles here in Japan and then exports to the third countries or uh, sells uh, in the Japanese market. So it is a new type of uh, cooperation between uh, Russian and uh, Japanese uh, companies. Uh, 
uh, and of course uh, we see including in accordance with uh, the eight point cooperation plan uh, which was discussed between uh, President Putin and former Prime Minister of Japan Mr. Shinzo Abe uh, we see good prospects for cooperation with Japan in such area as healthcare and uh, medicine uh, and of course uh, here uh, there is a task to uh, address uh, this COVID-19 challenge. Uh, I must say that uh, Russia and Japan has uh, already presented an example of uh, good cooperation in this area. Um, back uh, in uh, the spring 2020, uh, Russian uh, uh, direct Investment Foundation uh, Fund and uh, Japanese Bank uh, for in of International Cooperation uh, supported the Russian-Japanese joint innovation company Evotech Mirai Genomics in uh, development and production of uh, COVID-19 test system. And uh, we also hope for good cooperation with Japan with regard to Sputnik V uh, vaccine, which I mentioned at the very beginning of my presentation today. Uh, it is really uh, one of the best. Uh, it, this vaccine is really one of the best in the world, and it, is, uh, it has been proven by the fact uh, that uh, approximately 65 countries have already certified uh, this uh, vaccine. Uh, and uh, with some countries we agreed upon local production of this uh, vaccine and, uh, and also we are open uh, for the broadest possible cooperation including not just exports of Russian vaccine to the respective countries but also uh, technology uh, transfer and uh, localization of production of this uh, vaccine uh, in the countries that would show interest, uh, interest to it, and uh, there are uh, several countries that have uh, already started uh, production of uh, uh, Sputnik V uh, vaccine. Uh, uh, I would like to also specially emphasize uh, the great meaning of uh, cultural, humanitarian, and interregional exchange between Russia and Japan as an important part of our cooperation, of our relations. Uh, in 2018, to, from 2018 to 2019, we have uh, realized a very uh, big and important project of cross years of Russia and crossing years of Russia and Japan. Uh, during uh, within which we uh, presented each other's uh, achievements in the areas of culture, science, education, technology, sports, uh, etc. And then uh, we, uh, our leaders, agreed uh, to organize uh, a year of uh, intergam interregional exchange between Russia and Japan. Actually, it was supposed to be started. Uh, last year, but due to COVID-19 problem, we postponed uh, implementation of this uh, program to this year. Well, uh, we hope for further uh, improvement of the COVID uh, epidemiological situation in our countries uh, that uh, would uh, allow us to start uh, this uh, very, very important programs, program because, as you know, the Russian regions and the regions of Japan have uh, growing mutual interest in uh, establishing exchanges and uh, cooperation uh, which would uh, en enhance further social and economic development of uh, the two regions which would uh, definitely uh, contribute to further deepening of uh, friendship, mutual trust, and uh, mutual understanding between Russian and Japanese people. Uh, uh, and uh, we uh, do hope that 
this joint Russian-Japanese uh, activity uh, to further enhance our comprehensive uh, cooperation will uh, elevate our, our cooperation, uh, our relations to a new uh, level and uh, will uh, contribute to uh, further creation of uh, atmosphere for uh, uh, settlement of difficult issues on our agenda. Uh, including uh, a peace treaty, the, including the peace uh, treaty issue. Uh, we uh, think that we are sure that uh, there are huge opportunities for further development of Russian-Japanese uh, relations. Uh, for instance, well, up to the uh, and, and, uh, until before the COVID-19 pandemic started, and the uh, volume of trade between Russia and Japan was growing steadily, uh, reaching about uh, uh, 20 billion US dollars uh, a year in 2019. It is good to compare it with uh, the uh, reduction of our volume of trade uh, in 2014, 2015, but it is still less uh, than record high uh, volume of our trade, which we achieved together back in 2010, 2011, when our uh, volume of trade exceeded uh, 30 billion of uh, US dollars. So uh, we had a lot of things to do together to restore and to further develop uh, the uh, trade and investment cooperation uh, between uh, our countries. Uh, as Mr. Ashari mentioned the peace treaty issue, I would like to elaborate uh, our view on that. Uh, we think that, uh, we think that uh, this treaty that hopefully will be signed in the future between the two countries uh, should not be a treaty which, uh, as Minister Lavrov once said, is uh, usually signed uh, the day after the war uh, was over. Uh, we have uh, re-established, we have restored, uh, we re-restored our relations actually 65 years, nearly 65 years ago and back in 1956. And since that, our relations have been developing uh, for the benefit of the two uh, countries in the broad range of uh, areas. And uh, also, of course, it is obvious that the general situation in the world has changed greatly since that time. Uh, so uh, that is why we uh, hope uh, and we think, uh, we believe, uh, that uh, the future treaty between Russia and Japan would be a comprehensive treaty of peace, good, neighbor good neighborhood, uh, partnership, uh, cooperation and friendship. So it uh, will be broader than just a peace treaty which is concluded immediately after the war, because the state of war, as I mentioned above, uh, was uh, stopped between Russia and Japan uh, exactly 65 years ago, back in 1950, uh, back in 1956. Uh, and we are ready for further uh, dialogue with our Japanese partners uh, on this very, very uh, important, uh, important issue. Uh, and also, uh, we, I would like to emphasize that uh, we, uh, that we will be ready to continue uh, our exchange uh, between uh, the South Kuril Islands and uh, Japan in accordance with the agreements that uh, we have signed before. And uh, uh, these are such, such agreements as uh, uh, agreement 
on the visits of the uh, former Japanese residents uh, of the islands uh, to the uh, graves of their relatives on that uh, territories. Uh, it is also an agreement uh, on Japanese fishery in the Russian territorial waters of uh, the uh, South Kuril Islands. It is about uh, non-visa exchange agreement, etc. And uh, also, we, uh, of course, will continue our consultations uh, on uh, launching joint economic activity uh, on the island. Uh, you know that we have agreed upon certain areas of such cooperation, including uh, uh, tourism, including uh, uh, including uh, marine products uh, production, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, uh, thus we uh, show, thus we express. Uh, our understanding uh, towards the feelings of the Japanese public opinion uh, with regard to the South Kuril Islands. And, uh, but saying that and expressing such uh, an understanding, uh, we uh, do hope uh, that uh, also our feelings uh, with regard to the uh, to this issue uh, will be also respected on the mutual basis. Uh, it is uh, about the fact uh, that uh, these, uh, these islands uh, were uh, transferred to the Soviet Union and Russia as a result of the Second World War, as you well know. Uh, this year, uh, we will, uh, this year uh, on the uh, 22nd of June, there will be the 80th anniversary of the beginning of the Great Patriotic War. Uh, uh, you know, on that very day, in, uh, back in 1941, uh, Germany, Nazi Germany invaded uh, the Soviet Union and uh, caused uh, this aggression against Russia and to fight Nazi Germany and its satellites and to reach victory over them finally, uh, we sacrificed, our, my country sacrificed 27 million of human lives. So uh, we hope for respect from the Japanese side, from the Japanese public opinion to this fact. Uh, and you know the great meaning of this victory uh, because it, uh, as a result of this victory, uh, the, we uh, liberated uh, and uh, the Soviet Union and uh, other allied powers uh, liberated the peoples of Europe from Nazi occupation and thus uh, an opportunity was given to them to uh, freely choose the way of uh, their development, development which uh, they follow uh, up to now. So, uh, saying that, uh, I will uh, make it my introduction. And uh, uh, as we discussed with Mr. Ashari, uh, we have to spare some time for Q&A uh, session, so please, I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Galuzin, for the presentation. I just want to clarify that I borrowed this term, the theoretical state of war, from the Japanese media. It's not my own term, so <laughs> okay. I hope they can hear uh, your clarification and uh, uh, don't mention it. Uh, I have a question uh, first from uh, online. We received from uh, Nippon TV, uh, Kido-san. It's actually a follow-up on your uh, mm -hmm. note that uh, local production of uh, Sputnik is possible and Russia is uh, able to uh, make uh, take transfer. So the question is, uh, does Russia have any uh, plans to outsource manufacturers in Japan to produce uh, uh, the vaccine Sputnik? Uh, and uh, regarding uh, that, uh, 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 Korea, it seems that uh, it seems as Korea has produced that, have such. A, I, 
I'm not sure what's the meaning, but uh, anyway, and also, uh, if you have such plan, uh, what is your aiming, what are you aiming for? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, as I mentioned above, uh, we uh, are ready uh, for cooperation with Japan with regard to the Sputnik V vaccine, including uh, exports, including technology transfer, and including local production. And uh, which actually, uh, we are trying to look for the respective opportunities in the Japanese market and the, uh, at the moment if and when we can give uh, any concrete information about this, we will do it immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Second question from Anthony Rowley, South mm -hmm. China Morning Post. Mm -hmm. In what areas do you see economic cooperation between Russia and China developing most strongly at a time of strong tension between China and the United States? Well, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, though I'm not dealing directly, I'm not involved uh, directly uh, into our relations with our great friend and uh, neighbor and partner China, uh, I would like to emphasize uh, that we enjoy uh, strategic partnership relations with uh, uh, China. Uh, they are these relations are in extremely good uh, shape, in extremely good condition. Uh, actually, uh, if we if we characterize the areas of our cooperation with China, uh, uh, it is it is a very broad and long list of areas we cooperate. Uh, it is about strategic economic uh, cooperation. It is about cooperation in the area of uh, security, including uh, anti-terrorist activity. Uh, it is uh, cooperation uh, on uh, implementation of uh, joint uh, cultural and humanitarian and educational uh, projects. And it is, of course, uh, very, very close cooperation uh, within the United Nations and other international bodies uh, to address and to solve uh, topical uh, international uh, topical international issues. For instance, uh, you know very well how uh, Russia and China cooperate, for instance, in such uh, an important area as prevention of uh, um, arms race in the outer space and uh, etc. So uh, our relations with China are very, very positive, very, very good neighborly, very, very partner-like. So uh, we do hope and we do our best as well as, well as our Chinese friends, as I know, uh, to further uh, enhance and uh, develop uh, our partnership, our strategic partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, Clark. Mm -hmm. My name is Gregory Clark. I write for an Australian uh, uh, <clears throat> outlet. Uh, it's good to see you back in Japan, Ambassador. Your English improved, <laughs> continues to improve my Russian continues to go down, but anyway, no, no, no. we can't do anything about that. You mentioned the suffering of your country uh, during the Great Patriotic War. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Moscow in the 60s, and I saw how much you suffered. And it was in the 60s, or was in the 50s, that you negotiated the, peace the, um, the, uh, the opening of diplomatic relations with Japan. Mm -hmm. And in 1960, there was a condition imposed on that agreement, namely that Japan should not cooperate in any military alliance against Soviet Union. Um, does that condition still exist? Was it ever registered formally uh, in the present situation where 
uh, America does cooperate in alliances which in Europe at least uh, cause a lot of trouble to Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, would it still be viable? Mm -hmm. what, in short, mm -hmm. this is a condition which is sometimes raised but it's never been explained properly. I wonder if you could help us. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Clark. Uh, likewise, I'm very happy uh, to see you uh, again. Uh, I, I recollect uh, how many articles written by you, uh, Honorable Sensei, uh, I read in Japan Times and other papers uh, working here in Tokyo. Thank you so much. Uh, with regard to a question, I would like to, uh, to say uh, two things. Uh, first, uh, well, if you look at the Joint Declaration of 1956, uh, first of all, in the Article One, uh, we will see the uh, such we will see such language as restoration of uh, relations and uh, development, restoration. Uh, friendly and good neighborly uh, relations uh, between uh, peace and good uh, peace and friendly relations between uh, our countries so uh, actually in my uh, uh, in my address i uh, re really emphasized that uh, it is uh, our i th we consider it is our prior task to develop these good neighborly and friendly relations uh, with Japan uh, that uh, will lead to the creation of a qualitatively new atmosphere uh, in our relations that uh, would enable to uh, that will help us to uh, solve uh, difficult issues such uh, as a peace treaty issue. Uh, that is what. Uh, we think we should focus on uh, now. And the second part of your question, uh, I mean the, the military alliances issue, etc. Uh, well, uh, as we explained for several times uh, recently, uh, you know and you see uh, the uh, policy of the United States of America towards Russia. Uh, it is not by accident that uh, the United States, along with uh, some other European country, were included uh, in the list of non-friendly uh, nations uh, for Russia uh, recently by the Russian government. Uh, so the U.S. policy uh, towards Russia uh, is not friendly at all. Uh, in some areas it is really hostile. It may be characterized, it may be qualified as hostile. So, uh, and with this very country that pursues uh, such kind of policy towards Russia, uh, Japan has concluded uh, the military alliance. Uh, so it, of course, it creates very, very specific situation. Uh, because on the one hand, we, uh, we do want to develop friendly, good neighborly, uh, partner-like relations with Japan. But on the other hand, there is such a factor as American-Japanese military alliance and uh, American military presence in Japan. And uh, in the light of uh, the American policy towards Russia up to now, hopefully something... Uh, uh, may change after uh, the uh, recent and forthcoming dialogue between uh, the between Russia and the United States. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, this uh, the the policy of the United States uh, at the moment it is something that uh, does not contribute uh, to uh, to the. Uh, to the uh, uh, atmosphere for the development of Russian-Japanese relations. I mean uh, that uh, the the fact of uh, American hostile policy on the one hand and uh, fact a factor of 
uh, American military presence in Japan, on the other hand, creates a uh, very, very specific situation that should be somehow sorted out, as we think. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ambassador. Good afternoon. Uh, Pio D'Emilia from Italy, Sky TG24, news channel. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have two questions. <coughs> the first one relates with your introduction. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been in Japan for about 40 years, and I always heard about this Hoporyodo problem. You mentioned today that there are there is a willingness from Russia side to cooperate on many fields, and you mentioned them mm -hmm. in detail. Mm -hmm. But I believe that basically is the uh, I'm sure you remember when Tanaka and Brezhnev signed that first kind of agreement, and then many other times uh, you had official talks. But where is where does it stand now the negotiation? I mean, is Russia still considering giving back? or at least uh, you know, discuss uh, giving back at least two of these islands. You remember this was the last uh, uh, agreement that, not agreement, I mean pre-agreement that negotiation were upon. So does it still mm -hmm. exist a issue, a territorial issue between Russia and Japan? Mm -hmm. Or is just a matter of economical, social, cultural uh, uh, cooperation? Mm -hmm. The second uh, question is, uh, <clears throat> we are all waiting uh, about what happens with the Olympics. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you tell us under which conditions the Russian committee would not send his athletes to Japan? Would not? Would not. Oh, okay. Under what conditions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, thank good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for your question. Well, um, Again, uh, if you look uh, into the content of the uh, Russian-Soviet-Japanese uh, joint declaration of uh, 1956, uh, we will see uh, following uh, elements, uh, components. Uh, first, as I mentioned above, is about uh, development of uh, restoration and development of friendly relations between the two countries. and. Uh, that is what actually we want to do, as I mentioned above. And uh, we have many areas of uh, promising areas for mutually beneficial cooperation in uh, uh, with Japan. Uh, and that's what we want to do. Uh, as far as uh, the... And also we can see in the uh, joint declaration of 1956 uh, that uh, the first task, the first uh, thing that should be done is to conclude a peace treaty. Uh, uh, and I tried to explain uh, above uh, how we view, how we see uh, this future peace treaty uh, with uh, Japan, and uh, that is what we are working for uh, now. Uh, and also we are, again, we are ready for further consultations on the exchange between the South Kuril Islands uh, of Russia and uh, between the South Kuril Islands and Japan uh, in, various, in various fields. That is how we see the situation. Thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, well, actually, uh, as I understand, uh, I'm sorry, uh, as I understand, uh, now we uh, are working on the uh, participation of the Russian athletes in, in Tokyo Olympics. Uh, but frankly, uh, your question uh, on which conditions the Russian Olympic Committee would not send uh, our team to Japan, well, uh, m maybe it is better to, to, to uh, address this question to the Russian National Olympic Committee. But as, as I know, uh, we are working on uh, uh, ensuring uh, full-fledged participation of the Russian athletes uh, in the Olympics, in Tokyo Olympics, and we hope for successful uh, organization of Tokyo Olympics. 
uh, uh, two months later. Thank you. Kobayashi uh, mm -hmm. Freelance. Uh, my question is related to uh, the question of uh, Mr. Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid that uh, between the United States and Russia, the leaders don't respect uh, each other. Uh, I, I don't. The, the no, 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 I don't, I don't think that they respect properly each other. Mm. In recent remarks, I feel, and uh, if they are going to meet at, uh, uh, soon, from Russian side, what will be, what do you expect to be the results of that, uh, the summit meeting between the United States and uh, Russia? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as we all know, uh, yesterday, uh, Minister Lavrov and uh, Secretary Blinken uh, discussed uh, the ways of possible uh, improvement of uh, the Russian-American relations. Uh, my minister uh, said that in his uh, view, uh, this meeting uh, was constructive, this discussion was constructive. Uh, we felt uh, intention on the American side to somehow uh, try to remove uh, obstacles uh, that are uh, existing on the way of improve for improvement of our relations. Well, uh, Actually, we are now, as far as I know, we are now negotiating with the American side on the possibility of uh, the Russian-American uh, summit meeting sometime in June. And that is uh, what we are uh, discussing with the United States now. Well, uh, and if this meeting is, and we hope that this meeting uh, will be organized. Uh, well, uh, frankly, I'm not in a, in a position to uh, formulate uh, what kind of issues will be on the agenda of uh, this Russian-American summit meeting. Uh, but uh, I can imagine that, uh, as uh, the Russian leaders uh, mentioned for several times recent, have mentioned for several times recently, uh, we uh, think it would be appropriate uh, to discuss uh, the to discuss first uh, the issue of uh, Russian-American cooperation in uh, ensuring and maintaining strategic stability, uh, taking into account all the factors that can. Uh, influence uh, on this strategic stability. You know that now only one uh, legal instrument to uphold the strategic stability remains is the START III Treaty, uh, which was prolonged, prolonged recently by the initiative of uh, Russia, uh, which was finally supported uh, by the United States of America. Maybe it will be the main issue, but we are still in, uh, within the process of uh, dialogue with the United States on uh, how to organize uh, this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador, please allow me to ask mm -hmm. three questions I received mm -hmm. online, and mm -hmm. although we reach, almost reached the end of the session. Uh, first mm -hmm. question is from Isabel Reynolds. She's president of this club and uh, representing Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. What would it take to restore a momentum toward the peace treaty with Japan? What would, sorry? What, uh, what would it take to restore momentum mm -hmm. toward the peace treaty with Japan, mm -hmm. which seems to have faded since Prime Minister Abe stepped down? Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe mm -hmm. I add a second mm -hmm. question also. Uh, what are the plans? It's from Eric Johnson, the Japan Times. Uh, what are the plans uh, 
for this year uh, for visits by Japanese residents to the islands and which uh, what which islands it would be and are, are there any plans to increase the number of charter flights and last question from Tom O'Sullivan he's a guest member and he's a researcher also uh, could uh, you comment on Russian position on the current situation in Israel West Bank Gaza mm -hmm. given that Russia has military assets in Syria including at Tartus and uh, many Russian speakers live in Israel thank you mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, about the uh, restoration of the momentum for the peace treaty negotiations, uh, as, I, as I understood. Uh, again, uh, we are um, uh, ready for, the further for further dialogue with our Japanese uh, partners on a peace uh, treaty issue. Uh, you know that uh, as soon as uh, the, the uh, epidemiological situation uh, allows it, uh, we will try to, of course, to restore all the channels of our dialogue uh, with Japan. Uh, and in, in fact, we uh, didn't cut, uh, and the Japanese side didn't cut the dialogue. Uh, as I mentioned above, uh, there were telephone talks between our leaders. Uh, in September 2020, there were telephone talks between our minister, foreign ministers in, uh, to, in October 2020. There were online contacts uh, on the other levels between the foreign ministers, etc. So uh, I wouldn't say that uh, our dialogue uh, has been cut. Uh, it is uh, the force of circumstances that <coughs> made us uh, to maybe to maybe reduce a little bit our contacts and uh, there is no uh, possibility for often face-to-face -face contact at the moment. Uh, but uh, as soon as the situation uh, with uh, regard to the COVID-19 improves, I hope we will uh, restore uh, our dialogue with Japan. And again, I would like to emphasize uh, that uh, in, uh, what President Putin has said uh, uh, that uh, we uh, want and we do, and we, we want and we will uh, enhance our cooperation uh, with Japan. Uh, so uh, our position is is very clear. Uh, uh, question of, from the Japan Times, I think, uh, about the uh, visits of the Japanese uh, uh, nationals to the South Kuril Islands. Uh, well, uh, again, uh, the COVID-19 situation is the main factor now. Uh, until before the COVID pandemic started, uh, these uh, exchanges between these Russian islands and uh, Japan were uh, have been developing and uh, we do hope that as soon as the uh, COVID-19 situation is brought to normalcy we will restart uh, we will start again our uh, exchange uh, on the uh, this exchange between the islands and Japan including the visits of the Japanese nationals uh, to the graves uh, of uh, their relatives. We respect this uh, traditional Japanese uh, uh, ceremony and uh, we will try to, 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 to help. Of course, we will provide the broadest possible assist assistance uh, to these uh, visits, uh, but as far as the modalities are concerned, it is a subject to uh, uh, consultations uh, between the two countries. I cannot give any details uh, at the moment. Thank you. And the third question is about the uh, Middle East uh, situation. Well, uh, I think uh, you, uh, you, you, the colleagues, uh, who are uh, present here today uh, have seen, I hope that they have seen the statements of the Russian Foreign Ministry 
on uh, this uh, new uh, breakout of tensions uh, in the Middle East uh, uh, between Israel and Palestine. Uh, we, uh, first of all, uh, think that the main problem, the, the, the main reason of such such an outbreak, such an aggravation, such worsening uh, of the situation uh, in the Middle East is the absence of uh, direct talks between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, we uh, think that uh, it is the key a uh, key precondition, key factor for uh, reaching uh, two-state solution. I mean, the uh, launching of direct talks between Israel and Palestinians. And we, uh, as I know, we are ready to uh, organize the venue of such talks in Moscow. Uh, and uh, our, this, our position was confirmed. And now, to uh, at the moment, to uh, calm down the situation. Uh, we uh, urge upon uh, uh, b both parties involved uh, to stop uh, exercise violence, uh, to stop these uh, armed attacks, and to uh, come back to the uh, commonly uh, recognized principles of the uh, Middle East peaceful uh, settlement. Uh, again, Russia uh, is ready as uh, a permanent member of the UN Security Council and as a member of the Middle East Quartet uh, to act, act, to act uh, productively and constructively to uh, assist uh, the normalization of the situation in the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Galuzin, for your insights. I think this wraps up our event today. I have a, s a short comment about the visits to the island. We here in the press club, we have a so-called special project committee. Mm -hmm. It has uh, it organized press tours. Mm -hmm. So I hope after COVID you accept the uh, FCC journalists to visit the island in a special tour, a press tour. Mm -hmm. And that uh, will uh, mm -hmm. give us a chance to film directly there and don't pay high price for the footage from, uh, from there by Russian uh, media, basically. We need our own. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ashari, thank you so much for this idea. Uh, it's the first time I've heard about it. Uh, it's very, uh, I found it very uh, interesting. And uh, let's, uh, let's negotiate how it can be implemented, how, how it can be realized. Uh, uh, but f first, this COVID-19 situation should be <laughs> overcome. Thank I you. hope very soon. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And uh, you are already a member of the club. Uh, all ambassadors are honorary members. So oh, we'd like to you. give you a token uh, Omiyagi visit, oh, a token uh, present uh, for you. Thank you very much for coming today. <laughs> this is a special <laughs> exercise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We are trying to uh, promote the environment friendly products here. So also our logo. Thank you, Thank you for, again for coming. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Please remain seated until the ambassador leaves the room.